Hi guys, uh, Marguerite de Courcelle, CEO of Blockade Labs. I've been in the crypto space since like 2013 as a creative, and 10 years later, uh, I have a generative AI company that's focused on environment or world building uh, in a snap with using natural language. It works uh, in 3D environments, 3D engines, but think of us as like mid-journey, but for 360 3D experiences. So I'm going to show you uh, a clip here of the tool in action and some of the features we have of what that means. So that's the sketch tool, which allows you to use sketching as a prompt, if you're familiar with AI and control net. Then we have a remix feature. So once you have the underlying structure that you want, you can then test out various preset styles that we offer. Then we moved later last year into the world of 3D with our 360 image generation capability. So now you can go from sketching to then a fully realized 3D mesh. So from the uh, 3D mesh developments, we recently partnered with Unity as one of their verified solutions. So if you go to their Unity AI hub, you'll see us there. Um, and you'll see that in a second. But what's really neat about partnering with Unity and having this SDK is that we'll be able to also do things like working with all the Apple Vision Pro app developers. Um, and at the end of my presentation, I have some other really cool things we're doing for Apple Vision Pro. but. I think you guys kind of probably get the idea of what we do. So we have HDR lighting, and then um, it was going to show some avatars running around. But I uh, want to generate real time with you guys um, so you can see the tool in action. You can see like this web app viewer. We have both the web app and we have the uh, API. But on the web app, our goal is to be as accessible as possible. So all of your no code uh, curious uh, individuals, creative curious, who want to create can start uh, testing out without needing to download a 3D engine. Um, so we have in here something called Enhanced Prompt, which is a GPT. And with it, we can just give it instructions, and it will use best practices for the system. So I'll do one right now. Select a style. You can go to uh, sure. Well, let's do render. S stylized CGI realism and generate. So while that's generating, you can see over here the toolbar, toolbar which has the sketch feature. If we were going to draw in the immersive design space, it takes between 10 to 30 seconds, depending on network load, to generate one of these 6K resolution images. Uh, soon, we're going to be wanting to provide smaller thumbnail previews, so you don't have to sit there through the whole 10 seconds, but it's just not a feature we've gotten to yet. Also, I think the internet's a little slow here. I was trying to, there we go. So this is a pretty dark, it's a very weird skybox. <laughs> um, but if there's something somebody wants to see, we can do a sketch here. Let's do sun and so I'm going to say enhance prompt and sun and tower of doom. Mm, actually, let's do dark tones. I like watercolor. Okay. So 
and I was going to send my sketch, it's going to come back with using my outline, and it knows that that circle is a sun. And it knows that that tower I just drew will be my Tower of Doom. Um, so when that comes back. And then from here, we can open up the download modal and be able to download the 3D mesh. So you work in your lightweight 2D, and then you can move into 3D. But what I wanted to talk to you guys and why we are here as an environment generator is because what are we going to do with all of these millions of AI agents? Where are they going to go? Once they're all mobile, bouncing around into, you, into each other in static environments. Um, so it did not make me a sun, but that's OK. It's Tower of Doom. It is not perfect by any means yet. But um, so, so anyways, like the, the idea here of environments that we're really excited about having environments on demand like this is the idea of like an AI dojo. So AI dojos that can help facilitate uh, the recursive learning for the agents, being, making highly specialized agents in highly specialized environments that are dynamic and responsive and challenge the agents in real time. So I will go to my presentation here. Um, I really just wanted to show get to this slide. Let's start here. It is an internet problem. <laughs> so we are, uh, this is the roadmap and where, where we've been since we launched. We are currently starting to introduce the, you know, more of the controls, the ability to really get the environments you want. And then the next phase will be the smart environments. We plan to bring in and incorporate uh, token incentives, both on the model training side of what we do, uh, fac facilitating user feedback to help improve the overall environment model, but then also uh, with AI agents in these environments, using rewards for helping with training, learning, and then creating the ecosystem around that. So this is what we think of when we're thinking of the AI dojos. Uh, we're thinking of the director, well, and, and also another um, analogy here for these AI dojos is similar to, you know, the matrix when you run a program in the matrix and it's very specific for a very particular environment. It could be as much as a single room that's set up with certain objectives and parameters and you have something you're supposed to learn. So that's similar to how we would think of these AI dojos. Um, so you would have a director, an AI agent architecture that is responsible for that smart environment. And then the ecosystem is the elements that, you know, outside of the environment, but more nuanced, like um, various types of specific agents and other things you have in, a, in an ecosystem. Um, so after that, I think this is the example of our, it might have lag because of the Wi-Fi, but the Apple Vision Pro, so with the pass-through capability, what we can do is not just 360 virtual space, we can do any geometric space, both virtual or real life. So we can capture your environment in real time and send it to the servers and come back and have a tran transformative experience of the environment you're in. You're currently looking at Model 2, by the way. Our Model 3 is about to release, which is much more realistic. Um, that's entering training on March 1st. And then, so at the beginning of April, we'll have our new model. But you'll see that this capability of going, if you've seen the Apple headset too, you can go from uh, totally immersed to completely present. And this allows people to control the variance of what objects and, and, and the variance of that immersion. OK, so I was curious if anybody else had been thinking about where are the agents going to go? And where are these NPCs going to live? I think so far we've seen a lot of virtual 2D. You know, we're thinking of them as tokens, static, like they have metrics, they have data. Uh, I know we're probably thinking they can be NPCs like in um, GTA 5 and, and these other games of how we're seeing people play around with NPCs. But I was curious if anyone else was thinking about environments as a generative AI component to the story of NPCs. So I, I think it, that's why it was something I wanted to talk about today is because I think that environments are going to be a big part of that story. All right, so that's it for me. Uh, yeah.
Yep. Yeah, so the way that this model works, we worked with Intel to make the first 3D diffusion model. Uh, so not only does it generate the 360 image, but also the 3D information is associated to each pixel. So beyond that, what we do is we hide this information in the 5D color space, so it keeps it manageable and file size, and it's hidden. Um, but the other information can extend to physics and information for ray tracing. And yeah, so that is, like, will we get there? I don't know. But we're working towards that direction, and we know how we would do it. Uh, team is still about 13 people. And things like you know, getting the model updated and editing. So editing is our next release where you can hone in and be like, I don't want that uh, totem. I want it to be a tree. And you can replace. So you can keep iterating until you have the actual environment you want. Then being able to have free roam. So you're able to move beyond that tree. And you can see the backside with the pixels. Um, and to answer your question about Unreal, we, I mean, we really do want to continue on all those various integrations. We jumped from 130 API subscribers to 350 when we released the Unity package um, in that month. So, so obviously, that's something people want. And uh, once we have, the one thing that we're working with, those the Unity developers we're working with are so talented, and it requires a little bit of um, research R&D to get this like what we call mesh completion phase done. And once we have that done, we can rebuild that for all of these other various 3D engines. Yes. Yeah, 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 you can. Um, so the GLB file for the 3D mesh, and then uh, we have HDRIs, and we have video files. Um, we have PNGs and, um, challenge me on this, uh, the XR, yeah, XRs. <laughs> so we cover the, the HDRI, and then the 3D will open up to be more 3D file types, but GLB was most friendly because this is a web app. Um, so you can use the GLB in your uh, your very like 3JS website building. Um. Thank you, thanks guys. Okay, well thank you so much. Future Primitive.